We've all heard the saying, 90% of the fish are in 10% of the water. But the question is, is that true in your local pond as well? This morning, I'm starting out on one of my favorite spots in this pond with the mag draft. Oh, man. That was a good swipe. And I'm out here without another rod. Destroyed the mag draft. Been good playing with you, buddy. But that mag draft is gone, y'all. Having seen an almost three pounder destroy my mag draft, I wasn't ready to give up on the swim bait bite. So I tied on the Kitex Swing Impact. This color sun gill does a great job of replicating the blue gill that many bass in this pond feed on. That one, little bitty dude, not the big one I was looking for. Fishing the Kai Tech. Pretty little fish in the morning light though. All right, got a little bass on the Kai Tech swim bait. Over the next few minutes, I fished all the way around the pond again and arrived at these pipes. These pipes hold fish and I almost always get a hit, but it almost always shakes me. Jeez. The 90-10 rule can apply to even a piece of structure like this dock. Almost all of the fish I catch off this dock are in the deeper water on this corner. The better fish. Huge, but better. Right in that same place, that dark sleeper always gets hit. All right, this one hit the dark sleeper. Nice little bass. So in this pond, it makes sense that you would catch fish at the pipes and at the dock. But why are bass relating to this particular cove? As you can see here, the grass line extends about six feet off of the bank, but just beyond that, 10 to 12 feet out, there is a shelf that drops slowly to about 10 feet of water. These fish are down below, looking up at the grass, waiting for an excuse to go ambush prey. Got it. Good night, they take it so deep, guys. I mean, just choked it. Comes out clean though. Nice little bass. Dark sleeper coming through again, y'all. He's gone. The dark sleeper may be the perfect bait in this summertime scenario. The fish are feeding just a few inches off of the bottom and being able to let the dark sleeper stir up a little dirt is undoubtedly one of the reasons I got so many hits. Might have checked my line. That's a big one. That's a big one. Hit like a big one. I don't know if it is that big though. Maybe a catfish. Oh wow. It's a catfish on the dark sleeper. Dude, I thought that was a big one. Got my heart pumping. And since I had to go to work, I am gonna use these grippers. I don't need catfish all over me. Hey, did you hear me say I don't need catfish all over me, bro? Because I don't. Smoked that dark sleeper. Dude, you're starting to get on my nerves. Catfish on the dark sleeper. Just splashed water all over me.
You're free. There you go. Yeah, she's done. That's all that dark sleeper wrote. <laughs> With the mag draft and dark sleeper destroyed, I decided to tie on the Berkeley swim shad. I have modified the swim shad in the past and used it as a hollow body swim bait over grass, but in this scenario, I just wanted to see if I could fish it off the bottom and catch another bass. Small one. Small ones go after the small baits, I guess. With my time almost up and headed to work, I decided to tie on something I've never really thrown before, the drop shot rig. With my first cast, I looped it over a piece of metal on the dock, and I had to get a little creative in getting to my bait. It was an aha moment when I realized that these fish were feeding just off the bottom and that the perfect rig I've always heard about for that scenario is the drop shot. And that was a nice tug. with the Ned TRD, Z-Man TRD. Man, sucker hit hard. This last fish of the day on an obvious adjustment let me know exactly what rig I was gonna be fishing the next morning when I went out. Mm-hmm, <laughs> thick. I like it. I caught one just like it earlier today. A little bit bigger than that one. Got him right here. Pre-work fishing means time is everything, and the 90-10 rule puts me where fish are more often. Next time, I'll be fishing the drop shot. <laughs>